Hi, my name is Matt Pace. I'm a fire engineer with the San Jose Fire Department. Uh, today we're going to be talking about photovoltaic safety for firefighters, or PV for short. These are systems that are used to generate electricity. They're becoming very popular all over the country. Just in San Jose, we have over 800 PV installations, both residential and commercial. Our goals here today are to identify the components involved in a PV system, the panels, the inverters, the associated conduits, and what we need to stay away from and how we can address fires aggressively and safely. All right, so here's a typical two-story stucco residence. As we pull up on this house on a uh, um, structure fire, there's nothing pointing out in this house, but it has photovoltaic panels. It's not until we see the delta side of this house that we see what points out that this has a photovoltaic system, the inverter. And now we're gonna go ahead and go up on the roof and look at the panels and see uh, how they're mounted on this roof, where they are, and what to look out for. Okay, so now we're on the roof. We can see the panels on the south side. They're ideally located for us at the lower end of the roof. The whole ridge is available for us to ventilate. A couple of skylights. This is a, this is a great system for us. The main point here is not to touch the panels or the conduit leaving the panels. If the sun is out, they are energized. And they could be energized anywhere from 120 volts to 600 volts DC. I do want to point out one thing on these panels. Uh, connecting each panel to the next is a small black cable. That cable is what's curing the voltage. It increases as it goes from panel to panel. If you try and cut one of these cables, you could be exposing yourself to you know, upwards of a couple hundred volts of DC. So do not cut those cables and do not remove the panels. The new guidelines uh, proposed by the state are to give us three feet of access around the perimeter of the array. We have plenty of room above it but we will be allowed three feet around the sides and the bottom of the array under the new guidelines. Another thing is obvious on this system is you cannot tell where the conduit leaves the array and where it goes. We have to assume that it's entered the attic. Last year, the NEC codes stated that the installers could put the conduit back inside the roof envelope. This particular system, the conduit stays outside of the attic. Here next door, a neighbor has panels on the roof, but these are pool heating panels. They are not covered in glass. They weigh very little. You can see the larger diameter pipes moving the water up to the panel and back down to the pool. These pose no hazard to firefighters. There's no weight issue, no electrical issue. So if we need to move them for ventilation, go right ahead. They will get wet though. Okay, so here we have the inverter. This is what's telling us that there is a photovoltaic system up on the roof. The job of the inverter is to take the DC power that the panels are making and change it into AC power and it is then sending the power over to the circuit breaker panel. A key point with safety on this is that if all you do is shut off all the breakers or the main disconnect on the circuit breaker panel, it will kill this and this will no longer be operating. In other words, it will no longer be making AC power. The house will be safe. There is a disconnect right here that's a DC disconnect. It is just shutting off the DC power coming into it. All of the cables inside that conduit are energized during the daytime. Our lights will produce enough electricity to be a hazard at nighttime. Next, we're going to go ahead and look at this conduit run and where it comes from on the roof. Okay, so here we have the conduit penetrating the roof, uh, the exterior of the building. It's just underneath the eave. All of the conduit is a rigid metal conduit. That is a code. And you can see how it's uh, coming down the outside of the house. And then here it penetrates the lower eave. And then this will go along the exterior of the house all the way over to the inverters that we showed you. What we're going to be seeing in the future here is a lot of labeling on this conduit. Every 10 feet where conduit exits the wall, enters a wall, turns, there will be a bright labeling saying DC voltage or high voltage solar system conduit, alerting us that this conduit will be energized in the daylight hours. Okay, what we have here is the main electrical meter. You can see the label here, it says bi-directional. It means that it can spin forwards or backwards, depending on whether or not you're making more energy that you're using or not. Here's some of the labeling that will tell us that there's a PV system. It says, warning, dual power sources. Second source is a photovoltaic system. That will tell us that there is a system here. The inverter might not be right next to this outdoors. The inverter could be inside the garage. So if we see this labeling here, that's gonna be our warning. There's a PV system installed. Shut off all the breakers, just like usual, and um, stay away from the conduit and the panels and you'll be safe. Okay, so here we have another residence, single story, wood shake roof. You can see the panels mounted on the roof very clearly when we pull up. One unique difference on this one here is that you can see the brown painted conduit leaving the array 
and then going down into the structure. That poses a challenge for us because we don't know where it goes from there without knowing the structure. The panels themselves weigh probably less than 40 pounds and they're spread out over a great distance. So that's not really a hazard unless of course the attic has been compromised for some time in fire. But initially there's not much weight, uh, no more weight than a truck company standing in a close proximity on a roof. Okay, we're now in the garage directly underneath where the conduit entered the roof that comes down to our DC disconnect, comes inside the inverter, the inverter turns into the AC power, it leaves the inverter, and again in metal conduit is going to go all the way back to the main meter and uh, circuit breaker panel. You'll see there's a shutoff switch for the DC disconnect. That's primarily for servicing the inverter. It's not necessary for us to shut this off. It's not going to shut off the power that's in that conduit going up to the roof and to the panels. We must remember those are always energized in the daytime. There's no way to shut that off. Okay, now we're going to go over to the main disconnect panel so we can see the labeling that's on there and uh, the circuit breakers that supply power to this inverter. Okay, we're now in the rear of the house, the Charlie side of the house. This is where the main disconnect panel is, the service drop that comes down into the uh, meter. And again, this is a bi-directional meter. And you can see right now this meter is spinning backwards. So this system is generating more power than they're using. We have some labeling on the system right here. And I'm going to show you inside the circuit breaker panel. You can see a single double pole breaker. It says solar electric array on it. However, this particular breaker supplies power to the inverter. That's a key point. Once we trip this, the inverter is no longer operational. It's not making AC power and sending AC power back into the system. All right, so the conduit from the inverter comes into this disconnect. It then goes into the main panel. If we shut this off right here, it's just shutting off electricity going to the main panel. That's quite all right, go ahead and shut this off, but it's very important to make sure we shut off all these breakers. Primarily this one that says solar electric array. This is the breaker that feeds the inverter that's making AC power. So shut off all your breakers. If there's a disconnect, shut it off, no problem, and the meter will stop and there will not be any AC power in the house. Remember, there's always DC power in the conduit coming from the panels to the inverter. So that's it for a couple of residential systems. Now we're gonna go ahead and look at a couple larger commercial systems. All right, we're on top of Macy's department store at the Oak Ridge Mall in South San Jose. This system up here consists of about 1,600 panels grouped in different pods. As with the most large commercial installations, the requirements are that they be no larger than 150 feet by 150 feet. As you can see, there's plenty of room for us to work away from the panels, skylights, large glass areas for us to ventilate through. On even larger installations, it could be up to eight feet of a walkway along the perimeter of the building, access to the skylights, and even ventilation spaces if there were no skylights on the structure. Again, the important thing is do not walk on the panel, stay away from them. Right now, we're gonna go and take a look at the inverters for this system. All right, here we are at the uh, DC disconnect. This is uh, the same as the residences. All of the panel wiring is coming into this box right here. This is how you shut it off. Around the corner over here are the main inverters. All in weather tight cabinets. We don't need to enter these cabinets. We've got our disconnect right here going into the inverter and our AC disconnect going out to the utility. That would be all that we would need to do to isolate this system up here from delivering power back into the grid. It's not necessary to shut this system down unless the actual panel systems are damaged by fire. Um, if we're ventilating somewhere on the roof, um, we don't need to shut this system off here. As with most commercials, we're not able to shut down all the power anyways. All right, so here we see the conduits coming off of the array, going into the large combiner box, and from that point, it then goes on to that array disconnect. What I want to show you over here is little weather stations. This is all part of what they call data acquisition to monitor the health and performance of this whole system. It consists of a, a wind speed gauge, a temperature monitor, a pyranometer. This measures the actual amount of sunlight that's falling on all these panels. There's a little modem right here, and it sends all this information um, to computers that are monitoring this system uh, 365 days a year. They can keep track of the system. If the inverters are starting to decrease their output or there's a bad panel in the array, they'll know that remotely. Okay, our next commercial structure that we're on top of today 
is a very green building. They actually produce more energy than they use and have a whole host of other high-tech features to the building. One of which is the way these panels are mounted. These are actually integrated into the roof membrane. They can be walked on structurally, but prefer not to, just not to mark them up. It's a 30 kilowatt system. And again, you can see that there's room for us to operate. There are skylights and room between them. Again, we don't want to be cutting into these panels. We'll be completing a circuit that we don't want to. But it is a unique new system that we might see more of in the future. Here we are inside the mechanical room for this building. And really the only thing that tells us that there is equipment here for a photovoltaic system really comes down to the labeling. There is labeling on disconnects referring to photovoltaic system. And when we enter these buildings, this is gonna be the thing that we need to look out for to identify that the building has a photovoltaic generating system. All right, here's another interesting application for photovoltaics. This whole awning on the front side of this building is comprised of solar cells sandwiched between two layers of glass. So in addition to providing shading, it's creating electricity for the building. All right, so now that we have seen several examples of PV systems, we're gonna talk about applying all of this into your initial scene size up and your tactics. Identifying the PV panels versus water heating panels is the first step. They look similar to PV panels, but there will be far fewer, usually two to six panels instead of 20 to 40 in a PV system. And they contain water or a non-toxic glycol that can be up to 180 degrees in temperature. Here are some of the modern water heating panels. Notice the copper water inlets and outlets. Another identifier of water heating panels is the vertical tubing that carries the water through the panels. Here's another type of a system. It's a very old one and non-functioning. This is a batch heater. These systems can weigh quite a bit, usually up to 700 pounds. All right, what do you see on the roof of this house? This is PV or water heating panels. There's only three of them. And again, you can see the vertical tubes inside them. These are water heating panels. I should add that all of these systems we have seen are called grid-tied systems, which means the power is sent directly back into the power grid. There's no battery backup. These grid-tied inverters have been popular for the last five or six years. Most PV systems installed prior to 2002 will have a battery bank to store the power. You'll find these battery banks in garages or outbuildings usually. And also you'll see a very large conduit carrying all of the cables up to the panels. What we need to be aware of is the hazard is now the batteries on these systems, not the conduit. Handle these as a hazmat if damaged. These systems are considered low voltage as opposed to the grid-tied high voltage systems. Since there are so many systems already installed before the setback guidelines were established, we may have to deal with some of these in the future. Here are a few that could present some problems. This first one is on a fire station in Boulder Creek, California. It has several very large arrays that may take some creative tarping to cover all of these panels. How would you ventilate this one? Notice there's panels on both pitches. Horizontal ventilation would be a great idea. This also is not allowed under the new guidelines. Here's some more challenging vertical ventilation problems. This is a large building with a very large array on the south side. And you notice the north side does give us some roof to work on. And here's one more. Those are skylights in the middle there. These skylights would be very difficult to open topside. All right, so the next issue to deal with operationally is salvage and overhaul. This structure that we are at right now has arrays on a couple different pitches of the house. What we're gonna show you is how to effectively tarp these kinds of houses when you can. We can't always tarp them, but in the daytime, as soon as we can tarp these panels, the safer we'll all be. The main point here is just to cover all of the panels. You want to make sure that every single panel is covered with a heavy, dark tarp. We use uh, green tarps here. Those work fine. The blue plastic tarps don't work. You can use black bisqueen. That will work too. If you can't get to an array, you can use an aerial ladder or pike poles, whatever it takes to cover them all up will make the structure safe for us to get in there and pull ceilings and not be concerned about coming in contact with conduit. All right, here's the inverter on the system. You can see as we're applying the tarps over the panels, the voltage is dropping until it gets to zero. Once the voltage is down to zero, there is no hazard in the conduits coming from the panels as long as they're covered. This is the best way to leave a system safe after a nighttime fire, so that when sun comes up the next day, there's no arcing inside or during a daytime fire so we can aggressively overhaul and pull ceiling and not be concerned about coming in contact with conduit. All right, there's six key PV safety points that we want to address. Number one, daytime equals danger. Nighttime, there is minimal electrical hazard. 
During your initial size up, if a PV system is identified by any personnel, it's imperative that the IC be notified. Securing the main electrical panels does not shut down the PV panels. Electricity will continue to flow through the panels and the conduit to the inverter. The apparatus mounted lights can't produce sufficient light to generate electricity from solar panels. Sunlight can only be blocked by covering the entire PV array with a 100% opaque material. Remember, all of the cells need to be covered. Stay away from the solar panels and the conduit. Do not break, remove, or walk on any of the solar panels. So I hope this information has been helpful to you. Our goal is to give you more tools so that when you come upon a structure that's involved in fire and has a photovoltaic system on it, you understand it and you can still fight fire aggressively while providing for safety first. Take care and be safe.